kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hello, my name is Ari, and I help produce this show you're listening to. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for being here with us. It means so much that you're choosing to spend your time listening to this show and hearing what we've made for you. We truly couldn't do this without you. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Hi there, and welcome to 1.5, a kids podcast about climate justice. I'm Zanaji Artis. And I'm Olivia Greenspan. And we believe that kids like you deserve a livable future. A livable future. This means a future where no one will have to worry if our planet is healthy enough for humans to live safe and happy lives. That is Joanna. Joanna is our on-hand dictionary if we ever come to a word or a phrase that you might not know already. 1.5 is a show where we explore what climate change and climate justice is with scientists, youth activists, and other environmental leaders who generously share their experience and expertise with us. And our last episode, episode five, What is Environmental Racism? with Kevin J. Patel, we introduced the topic of environmental racism. Today, we are speaking with Jerome Foster II, who, among other things, is the youngest member of the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council. In our conversation with Jerome, we discussed what climate justice means to him, his work on the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council to address climate injustice, and the ways in which environmental justice and climate justice both differ and overlap. Okay, to the interview. My name is Jerome Foster II. I just turned 19 years old. I am a climate justice activist. I'm the executive director of One Million of Us, which is an international youth education, advocacy, and voting organization. I'm the editor-in-chief of The Climate Reporter, which is an environmental news agency that basically, the climate movement's news agency that like really talks about the urgency of the climate movement in a way that should be, be normal throughout the news industry, but it isn't. Um, And I also serve on the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council um, as the first Gen Z member selected for federal um, advisory council and and also the youngest member as a part of it. And yeah, I'm excited to be here and and to be in you guys' presence to talk about the important issues that we have to to tackle today. As you know, the name of this podcast is 1.5, a kid's podcast about climate justice. And even though it's in our name, you know, our audience uh, is roughly ages 10 to 15. And so for some of them, it it might be their first time hearing this word, climate justice. So um, how would you define what climate justice is for a 10 to 15 year old? That is so incredibly important understanding what climate justice is. So breaking down what climate justice is all about, it's really two main facets. It's the merger of technology and science and also the, the socio-political aspect of the environment as well. And what does that mean? That means that it, the climate justice movement isn't just about just making solar panels and making wind turbines more accessible, but also looking at the past, looking at what, what, ha- what impacts has, has climate change already had on communities. And that goes into the, the equity piece of like the fact that over 80% of, of coal-fired power plants are placed in black and brown communities. And the fact that exploitation, the idea of limitless extraction, comes from the idea of, of, of slavery and continual just, just exploitation of that. So I think that when we talk about climate justice, it's that, that merger of that. You can't slap a solar panel on the climate crisis. And you also have to have technology that, that, that builds on the social justice aspect of it. So at the very root of what climate justice is, it's making sure that our environment is able to advance through technology um, in the future, but also looking at the past and saying what damage has already happened, and let's fix that as well. So it's, it's a plethora of time looking into the future while also looking into the past. That was really great. And I just have to say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that like the this is the knowledge that is needed in the White House, right? Like we're we're so grateful that someone with your expertise and your experiences and a young person leading in this movement has that opportunity to yeah, share this platform and and talk about climate justice um to our leaders. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I, I was selected to be a part of the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council in March of 2021. And ever since, we have been advising as a part of our council on the Justice 40 initiative, which basically means that all executive funds that go to the environment, 40 percent of that um, has to go to frontline communities. Jerome just mentioned a really important term, frontline communities. Since this may be a new term for many people, we asked Jerome to define what a frontline community is. A frontline community is a community that is especially exposed to the climate crisis, or that's through mudslides, or through increased hurricanes, or through increased heat waves. A frontline community is a community that is routinely exposed to the climate crisis and may not actually have contributed to the creation of CO2 emissions. A really good example of that is an island in the Pacific Ocean called Tuvalu, which had minuscule amounts of emissions, but is now going to be several feet under the ocean because of the fact that us in the global north, especially in the United States, China, and in the EU, have polluted so much that that pollution doesn't just stay over Europe or stay over the U.S. It continues to travel around the world. So every country feels it in so many different ways. And sometimes it's frontline communities in the global south that are experiencing it first. Okay, thanks, Jerome. Back to Jerome's work on the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council. So we directly oversee the implementation of investments in the clean energy transition. Also, we help to advise on executive orders that pertain to climate and the environment. And also, we're, we're currently working to make sure that communities that are on the front lines and disadvantaged communities have access to having higher seawalls, having access to, to resources that are, that, are, that are needed to transition to renewable energy. And really, the council has, has been a, a way to understand how politics, uh, the politics of, of environmentalism works and understanding that the urgency is now. And I think that with this new administration, with the Biden administration, he's understanding the transition, understanding the urgency, but also we have to continue to push because when it comes to pipelines, when it comes to, to, to key infrastructure like that, we also have to continue to make sure that we're being progressive and not just continuing the status quo. So with my role is that we advise, we send letters, we um, advocate on behalf of communities, and we're there to, to be a direct line of communication with the American people. And it's been a stellar and, and just amazing experience. Excellent. I mean, like Sanashi said earlier, um, we're so happy you're there and doing that work and representing Gen Z in the fight for environmental justice. It's, I mean, honestly, like, it makes me so happy that you're on that council and doing that incredible work. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll have more with Jerome, including specific examples of climate injustice and your power in this movement. We'll be right back. Here at A Kid's Company About, we make podcasts, but also books, classes, and even more for kids and families just like yours. We've got a couple new and upcoming books in our Little Book About Ford book series, embracing toddlerhood's most essential topics. Here's one of our authors sharing a sneak peek. Hi, my name is Ashwin Chaco, and I'm the author and illustrator of A Little Book About Justice, a new book in the series about what is at the core of justice and how can we be just. Learn more about A Little Book About Justice by visiting akidsco.com. Hi, I'm Nikita Simpson. And I'm Dr. Lockhart. I wrote a kid's book called A Kid's Book About Emotions. And I help kids and grown-ups work through their emotions. This is Everyday Feels, a podcast about emotions for kids and their grown-ups. I think it's so great when you have a person that you trust in your life, that you feel open and able to share everything that's going on inside of you. I agree, Nikita, because I think it takes so much confidence and bravery in sharing our stories and being vulnerable because we're trying to normalize talking about feelings and emotions. That means that we all have them and it's okay to talk about them because we all feel them. And you're always allowed to feel what you feel. Let's continue this journey together. This is Everyday Feels, a podcast about emotions for kids and their grownups.
Welcome back to 1.5, a kids podcast about climate justice. Let's return to our conversation with environmental justice activist, Jerome Foster II. So I am going to jump back for a little bit <laughs> um, and just, just, just one more thing. And so you mentioned pipelines and advising on that to the White House and to President Biden. And I think that's really interesting. And just to come back to that question earlier about what are like the misconceptions that people have about colonialism and talking about that as a root cause of climate change. Colonialism, the policy or practice of acquiring full or partial political control over another country, occupying it with settlers and exploiting it economically. And just to come back to that question earlier about what are like the misconceptions that people have about colonialism and talking about that as a root cause of climate change. And I think a major one is that people think that colonialism is trapped in history and that it isn't a modern problem. But we know, and you definitely know from advising the White House on this issue, that pipelines are an example of modern colonialism. And what it means is that these companies, so you mentioned Exxon earlier, but there's oil companies in the U.S. and all around the world where they're building oil rigs in the oceans and they're building pipelines through indigenous lands. And I think that's super important to recognize. And for kids listening right now, you may have only seen Exxon or Mobile or Shell or any of these companies as where you go to get your gas, right? And it, it, you get to go places in your car because of that gas. And maybe you have heat in your home because of gas. But it's actually causing a lot of harm in other places in the U.S. and around the world. And that is an example of colonialism. So just wanted to raise that too. And yeah, feel free to add if you had other thoughts on that too, but. Yeah, I definitely want to add on like the harm of natural gas and oil um, that Chevron and Exxon use. When we talk about fossil fuels, a lot of people just think that it's just like an oil and it comes out perfectly that we can use it. But in the case of Oklahoma right now, what we're seeing is that because so many oil companies are currently mining for natural gas, they've seen over a hundred earthquakes in Oklahoma alone each year because of natural gas. And that's right there making them a frontline community and being aware that clean energy is the only way to have stable, safe, and, and just all across just better energy that we can use because it's not profiting off of, of continual exploitation. So definitely remember that, that natural gas is anything but natural and that the true clean energy is, is solar and wind and, and the plethora of other sources that we use, but natural gas is not natural. So. Remember that. <laughs> yes, definitely. So now really want to talk about, I guess, more specifics with climate organizing, with your work, and want to ask, what do you see as the difference between environmental justice and climate justice? And what areas do they overlap and how are they different? They are very similar and a lot of times interchangeable. So I'm, I'm not a big advocate of just like language and the fact that like, environmental and climate to most people are just very similar. But on a technical level, environmental justice is focusing mostly on just the environment itself, focusing on like natural resources and natural um, like occurring things like water and air and things like that. But climate justice is solely focusing on climate change and focusing on the, the phenomenon that climate is continuing to stabilize our, our planetary climate systems. And the justice that's needed to recover from that it is climate justice. Environmental justice is more just on the level of, of, of basic not nature only solutions, but climate is taking that human input as well. All right. So that is the end of the questions that we've planned, but want to ask if there is anything that we didn't ask you that you wish that we had or anything else that you just really want to share for the audience. Um, sure. Yeah, I think that two things that I would encourage everyone who's watching this podcast is understanding that everything is within the scope of your power, that maybe signing one petition or listening to this one podcast or, or, or reading this book isn't the only thing you can do. You are you are the movement. You are the change that you want to be, envision yourself to be, that you dream yourself to be. And I think that if you are able to understand that you are so much more powerful than you understand, then, then you, can, you can lead movements and you can change the world. 
you are the person everyone's waiting for to join this movement. You're, you're, the, you're the climate striker that, that allow us to continue to, to press this, this movement forward and have more, more powerful and positive change. So continue to, to organize, continue, continue to be bold, continue to be just passionate about what, what you love and, and keep on fighting the good fight. And that concludes our conversation with activist Jerome Foster II, which means you know what time it is. It's time for Climate Climate Justice Justice Game Show. Show. Sanaji, you're up first again. Question one, what is climate justice? For Jerome, climate justice means fixing the wrongs of the past while also pursuing technologies that help us overcome climate change. That could be solar panels, wind power, hydropower, all these different ways that we can produce energy and secure our right to a livable future. Okay, Olivia, what is some of the work being done by the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council to address climate injustice? Yes. First of all, it was so cool to learn about Jerome's work on the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council and cool that he's the first Gen Z member. So as as Jerome described, the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council works to make sure that communities that are most impacted by climate injustice are protected. They advise the White House on justice issues. They send letters to people with decision-making power and our direct line of communication with the American people. Okay, Zanaji, third and final question. How do environmental justice and climate justice differ, and how do they overlap? Mm -hmm. So environmental justice is focusing on the environment itself, for example, water and air, while climate justice is focusing solely on stabilizing our planetary climate system and protecting those most impacted by climate change. Jerome noted that they are very similar terms that both deal with protecting people and our planet. Yes. And you know what I loved about what Jerome said? You know, we focus a lot on terms on the show and terms are important, but I like that Jerome said that while it's great to learn and make distinctions, it is also okay to not get caught up in the nuances between all these different terms. Uh, And with that, that concludes today's round of questions. And remember, and this is the most important part, you are learning new things just by listening. We're going to be exploring these topics throughout this entire season of 1.5, and we'll be building on your knowledge as we go. We invite you to revisit episodes at any point along the way, and always feel free to ask questions. And we'll be giving you an email address where you can contact us whenever you'd like. Thank you, listeners, for joining us today. And thanks to Jerome for sharing his expertise on designing policies and leading a movement to create a climate just world. You can find out more about Jerome's work by following him on Instagram at Jerome Foster II or by visiting the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council's webpage. We will, of course, have links to both in our show notes. 1.5 is written by me, Olivia Greenspan, and me, Zanaji Artis. With occasional support from me, Joanna from naturalreaders.com. Our show is edited and produced by Matthew Winner with help from Ari Mathay and the team at Sound On Studios. Our executive producer is Jelani Memory. And this show was brought to you by a kids podcast about. This show is inspired by our book, a kids book about climate change and the millions of young people around the world fighting for their right to a livable future. You can write to us at listen at a kids podcast about.com. And be sure to check out other podcasts made for kids just like you by visiting akidsco.com. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcast at A Kid's Company About. We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at A Kid's Podcast About. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kid's Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. (laughs) 